Halo Infinite has been out for two years. Two years. Time flies, but it also felt like it took forever to get here. The game clearly needed this time, even the delay, to get to where we are at. So much has happened in those two years, and I think it's a good time to sit here and reflect on what's happened to the game since it launched. Now, the multiplayer had a surprise launch where we speculated there would be more maps when the campaign launched. There wasn't. There were months where BTB didn't work. There were only four playlists at launch. The store was awful with the pricing. You had to pay $20 for the color white. There was no Forge, no career ranks, no campaign co-op, no infection or other fun party modes, no custom game browser, no rewards for just playing the game. It was awful. Joe Staten had been brought in to try and save the game, and even then it felt like an impossible task. The player base dwindled. All hope was lost. This was the nail in the coffin for Halo Infinite, and all that time waiting, well, people were sad and upset. Seasons were six months long. We had a winter update. Technically, I think Season 2 was really ten months, but we don't have to talk about that a lot. The game was truly on life support. If that, so many articles and videos were being made about the death of Halo, even recently, how it would and could never come back. Although... If you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you know that I always had some faith. But before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has been supporting the channel. You guys make it absolutely worth it to get on here and upload content. From liking the videos and helping me out with the algorithm, to letting me know your feelings in the comments. All of this has come to us almost hitting 15,000 subscribers this year. And I know 90% of you who watch the videos actually don't subscribe. And we could easily hit that, maybe even with this video. So if you love Halo, you love Halo content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I promise you won't be disappointed. I could literally be your third favorite Halo YouTuber. Now let's get back into the video. But then something happened. Well, a lot of things happened. Season 3 came out in March of 2023, and that's where I feel a real turnaround began for Halo. Well, maybe a couple months before that. In September of 2022, it was announced that Bonnie Ross was resigning from 343, and there were many many more shakeups in leadership, and downsizing of the studio after that. Pierre Heinz took over Infinite, the man who many credit was saving the Master Chief collection, but there was still doubt. Would they just stop supporting Infinite and move on to another game? Would we have to wait years and years to get that new Halo game? Fans were begging for anything, any type of news, and Pierre released a simple statement that looking back on meant more than I think we realized. Forge actually released in November of 2022, and that immediately made a huge impression on the fan base. This version of Forge is incredible, truly, and it keeps getting updates even today. We also started to get little surprises, such as the custom game browser launching in December of 2022. Now, it's crazy the game didn't launch with this stuff, I agree, and it was ultimately extremely detrimental to the game and the ecosystem. But we were finally getting somewhere. We weren't just spinning tires in the mud now, the community had tools to create their own content while waiting for 343 to get back on track as well. Season 3 launched on March 7th of this year, and we are finally going to see a normal release schedule of content and seasons going forward. New maps, modes, the bandit rifle, equipment. We were really starting to see the foundation for the future of the game. Many speculated that Season 4 would be the end of Halo Infinite, and I think maybe they were a little off. Also, we did see the departure of Joseph Staten, who left for a gig at Netflix, which was another sad moment for the game, and a little hope was lost again. Fast forward to Season 4, it launched with a slew of new goodies including infection, career progression, more forge updates and maps. We got new equipment with the Quantum Translocator and the Threat Seeker. There were technically five free events. Like other seasons, we got a new armor core and more. Season 4 was another addition onto that foundation of the game. And now we're in Season 5. Arguably, actually, no, I don't even think it's arguably. This is the biggest season of Infinite's lifespan so far, and what really feels like the revival of the game. New maps, a change to events, a new variant of the Bandit that was dropped into rank, completely changing how it's played, a new mode, a hero rank reward, cross-core helmets, new forge canvases and objects, a new equipment called the repair field, and finally a replayable PvE mode with Firefight King of the Hill being added just a few days ago. We also got some nostalgia hit with the Halo 3 refueled playlist that was full of Halo 3 forge maps that came out on November 14th. 
And then we got the addition of AI in Forge for enemies, and that's really changed the game in its future in my opinion. Instead of events, we have operations that run from four to six weeks, and there's been a ton of changes added as well. Now, obviously, there's still issues with Halo Infinite. Again, it's been two years since the release, and we still don't have any type of campaign DLC or an expansion or really any single-player update in that regard. Personally, I think that's extremely important. I would love to see some type of, well, anything really come out regarding campaign, whether it's just a new area or a couple of missions or just anything like that I think would be a great addition. We also got rid of the narrative cutscenes in the multiplayer game in favor of stories on Halo Waypoint, with one of the best reveals in Halo being that a Spartan was infected by the Flood recently, but we don't get to see that in the game, and I wish we could. I would also like to see more rewards given out just for playing the game. I think progression-oriented rewards are extremely important to the player base. I think you need to be able to unlock more armor without having to go to the store and paying for it. Something else that I absolutely hate is that even if you want a coating, you have to buy the full bundle. For example, I've been waiting for Papaya Dust for months now and you have to pay like 20 bucks or whatever it is to get that because you have to get the armor and everything else with it instead of just the coating and i think that's whack like i would pay three dollars for it i i'm not gonna lie but now that we have all those other game modes that were staples in previous halos aside from something like griff ball i would like to see something more something more extravagant with the new seasons coming up that would drastically change the gameplay loop we still don't know about the Battle Royale, whatever mode that Certain Affinity is making. The Game Awards are coming up soon. Maybe we'll see something there, but I would not get your hopes up because I kind of doubt we will. We're kind of in a low right now because there's also no HCS events, and they tend to do a lot of the bigger reveals at those. But the future for Halo Infinite, even though it's been a great past few seasons, it's still kind of cloudy. I almost feel like we're living on the edge when it comes to how many seasons are left or what 343 is working on because we don't really have a future roadmap per se. Now that we have Forge and the custom game browser and AI, we can create our own PvE experiences and people are doing that. So does that mean that the development focus is going to shift from giving infinite new things to working on a new game completely? I just honestly don't know. But what I do know is that I enjoy playing the game right now. I'm happy for the additions they've made, even though I wish, I wish, wish, wish that the game had launched like this, and it stinks to sit here and think, man, what if? But it seems like the first time since launch we're gaining players, and that the player base is still growing, and that people are hopping on more regularly now. I'm also sure that there are a ton of things that I've missed in this video of things that happened that we didn't really talk about the downsizing of the studio that much or what we thought were key members of the team leaving. And I think that all of those things have had an impact on Halo Infinite. But it really does feel like the franchise that this game is finally on track again. The leadership has shown that they're listening to the player base and are making these changes and are prioritizing things that they need to prioritize. With the Firefight launch, we got a new networking model that hopefully will help fix the issues of desync and just all the networking issues that plague the game. I still have hope for Halo. I still have hope for Halo Infinite. And I think it's a good time to reflect on the launch of Infinite and where we are now. I think that the developers should also do this to, to see how much improvement they've made. I really do feel like the people who work on Halo love the franchise, love the game, and want to make something special. Now what I want you to do is let me know in the comments down below how you feel about Halo right now. And I want you to be completely honest, as long as you're respectful. Have you stuck around for the entire two years? Did you uninstall and re-download and uninstall and re-download? Are you excited about the future? Again, I really do feel like it's bright, but we just don't know what's going to happen with Halo Infinite and where it really falls on the priority list going forward, and that's really the only downside, but I'm going to enjoy the game right now. That's it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and I will catch you around the ring. Peace.